Basically, the word Igorot is defined in books as people from the mountains, and these people live in the present Cordillera administrative region in the northern Philippines. And yet, some Filipinos use the word Igorot like this. Igorot <laughs> Guys, ano masasabi niyo sa ano ni Audrey ngayon nung taong ano? You know? Ang huling itim ng igorot. <laughs> Ang huling itim ng igorot. And even some Cordillerans don't want to call themselves igorots. So what went wrong? And what does the Igorot word actually mean? Why do some Cordillerans don't want to call themselves igorots? What is the correct meaning? And who should we actually call igorots? Well, it's time to clear things up. First, we have to know the truthful origin of the word Igorot. Will you believe me if I say that the origins of the word Igorot is 100% from the old indigenous Filipino language and not coming from the Spaniards? The origins of the word Igorot came from our Austronesian heritage. Note in mind that before the arrival of the Spanish colonizers in the Philippines in the late 1500s, the Philippines was so rich in its Austronesian heritage and culture. Igorot came from the old Tagalog word gulot that means mountain chain and with the classic Austronesian word construction prefix i that means people of or dwellers in. Igolot therefore means people of the mountain chains or in shorter term is mountaineer. Gulot actually survived in the language of some Bagus or Bagus who are descendants of the Igrots in the highlands living now in the lowlands. As clear as it sounds, Igolot is truly an indigenous term. But the question is, did the Igolots call themselves Igolots during those times? And well, the answer is no. There is no record that the people of the mountains call themselves people of the mountains or in short, Igolots. It was the people of the lowlands where the word originated who called the people in the soon to be called Cordillera Igolots. There was no concept of tribe in the olden days. People in the region called themselves by the name of their villages and not by the name of the provinces or sub provinces they're living in. It was the Americans who imposed the names Bontok, Ifugao, Benguet, Apayao, and Kalinga in accordance with the American ethnological surveys headed by Dean Conant Wooster. When the Spaniards arrived in Luzon for their gold mines expeditions, the word Igolot first appeared on their written records in 1576. Igolot is simply the Spanish form of the Filipino word Igolot. It became the casual call to the people of the mountains in the 1590s, the years when they fully discovered that these people living in the mountains were brave fighters and fierce defenders of their homelands, keepers of their independence, and that they collected the heads of those they defeated in war. In the 1700s, the Spaniards applied the word Igolot to pagans living in the mountain areas, which in the present are in the mountains of Nueva Vizcaya, Pangasinan, Sinan, Iloko Sur, Benguet, Mountain Province, Ifugao, and extended to Apayao in the 1770s, then Kalinga in the 1880s. It was in the 18th century when the letter L was substituted with letter R from Igolot to become Igorot and was popularly used. It was due to the writings of the Spanish missionary priest named Father Antonio Mozo who spelled the word Igolo in 1763 but soon commented corrupting the letters they are won't to call it Igorot. There you go, the word became Igorot. By the time when the Americans took over, the word Igorot already became the description of the mountaineers. Many American anthropologists used the word to label all the mountaineers in the region. Dean Conan Wooster made a comprehensive Igorot record while giving names to the different parts of the Cordillera and the tribes living in it. Igorot has become the identity of the mountaineers and that it carries their cultural heritage that is distinctly Igorot, a heritage that is truly strong and greater than many other ethnic groups in the Philippines. Our ancestors fought and defended our land. They stayed fierce and remained independent, enjoying their freedom, drinking their rice wine, and dancing our ethnic dances, while almost everyone in the lowlands have submitted to the rule of the Spaniards. A very reason why until this very day, our Igorot heritage is still alive.
And now let us address the two issues that we mentioned earlier. Number one, why are there endless instances that some Filipinos from the lowlands use the word igorot in a very wrong and ridiculous way? The videos shown earlier are just some of the misusages of the word igorot by some people from the lowlands. There are a lot more of instances where our igorot brothers and sisters experienced racist and ignorant rants from other Filipinos. There are many negative connotations of the word igorot delivered by some other Filipinos like igorot means ugly, igorot means dark-skinned, short, curly-haired, and having thick lips. Igorot means uneducated, barbarians, lawbreakers, unchristian, ill-mannered, and a lot more. Where did all these ideas come from? We have been making videos about this in the past, but let me just enumerate. First, when the Spaniards tried to subjugate the region, which they called Región de la Cordillera, they failed. They sent many expeditions, but the Igorots fought back and defeated them in battle, leaving many of the defeated soldiers headless. To avoid humiliation on their defeat to gunless pagans, and to cover up their failure to control the whole area of the Philippines. They branded the Igorots as lawbreakers and uncivilized. Second, the soldiers who tried to infiltrate Cordillera were not only Spaniards, but there were also many Filipino members. Spain had full control in the lowlands, and so they were able to gather the loyalty of the Filipinos. It was already predetermined to have Filipinos versus Igorots, not only in combat but the idea, and that led to added stigma against the Igorots. Third, the supposed reason why General Gregorio del Pilar failed and died was because of an Igorot traitor. And it was talked about like a wildfire. Yet, when the forces of General Emilio Aguinaldo gathered a number of Igorot Tingians from Abra to march to Manila to join the battle against the Americans, with all the abuse and discrimination from both the Filipino Katiponeros and the communities they passed through, no one talked about it. Of course, the Tingians were defeated as they were fighting the Americans with only spears and shields. They were made to surrender by the Americans, befriended them, fed them, and made made them allies to serve as scouts to the mountains of the Cordilleras. That was the beginning of the downfall of General Emilio Aguinaldo. And this scenario, of course, made the Igrots sound like unnationalistic and traitors. Fourth, the Americans made the Igrots the very definition of uncivilized, backwards, and uneducated savages. The lowest point of human abuse and discrimination in the world came in the form of human zoos in the early 1900s in Coney Island, New York. The Igorots that the Americans brought there became an instant crowd catcher as they made them look far from civilization and even making them eat dogs in front of shocked American audiences. During the early 1900s, the Filipino will to have self-governance was very strong. But because the American government didn't want the Philippines to become independent and wanted it to stay as an American colony, they took advantage of the Igorots. They showed them in their human zoos in order to gain support from the American population and make them believe that the Philippines was far from ready to have their self-government. Fifth, the Philippine Assembly in 1908 aimed to provide the Philippines with a self-government, meaning Filipinos would govern and seek independence from the American colonizers. Yet again, because the American government did not want the Philippines to become independent, the promoted Secretary of the Interior, Dean Conan Wooster, did everything to prevent it from happening. What he did was took all the mountain range areas and created a single province called Mountain Province. He made it sure that Mountain Province would not be controlled by the Philippine Assembly. For as long that the Filipinos could not control this area, they could not claim their independence as they could not prove that all Filipinos are together as a nation. This made the boundary between the lowland Filipinos and the Igorots even thicker than ever. The result was the Igorots again became the bad guys, the disease, the reason why the Philippines could not claim its independence in the eyes of the lowland Filipinos 
Filipinos, the Igorots were the uncivilized, backward people causing trouble. Nobody actually knows how Philippine history books began containing ridiculous contents about the Igorots. No one also knows when it started, but we have been seeing erroneous books full of misconceptions against us, the Igorots. The worst part is that many were approved by the Department of Education and were put into the classrooms for study. This caused widespread misconceptions about the Igorots. Not only the students believing that the Igorots are the Aitas and the Negritos, but also it was how teachers understand it and were teaching them to the students. A lot more of erroneous books were published containing errors and misconceptions about the identity, the language, culture, and land of the Igorots. Number two, why do some people of the Cordilleras don't want to call themselves Igorots? First, the stigma that the word Igorot carries is so heavy that made many Cordillerans ashamed to be called Igorots. Second, the Igorot prejudice the lowland Filipinos have that have been there for centuries have driven some of our Igorot brothers and sisters to draw themselves away from being called Igorots. Third, the racism and the discrimination by lowland Filipinos in the past brought about by the wrong pieces of information from schools sourced from the erroneous books exhaust some Cordillerans to distance themselves from being called Igorots and rather some say Ifugawak sa anak na Igorot among others. We Igros have survived the extreme test of the past thanks to our brave and fierce ancestors for keeping the independence of our land and preserving our heritage. We are people of the mountains. The Cordillera we are now called because of the mountain chains that connected us all. We are called Igorots, because as its meaning tells, we are mountaineers. We are people of the mountains. Within its name, it carries the blood of our ancestors. It signifies our identity as a people. We are people that are built different from other tribes in our country. For 300 years of Spanish rule, our Igorot ancestors fought for the independence of our people, of our land, while our lowland brethren submitted to the rule of the Spaniards and lost their Austronesian heritage. We are Igorots. We are the descendants of the people of the mountain chains, mountain chains that was called Cordillera. We stand as one yet carry our own own colorful identities. Itneg, Isnag, Kalinga, Ifugao, Bontok, Kankanai, Nabaloy, Kalanguya, and others. We are Igorots. We are Igorots and we own this identity that cannot be controlled or defined by anybody. As Jose Dulnuan from Ifugao said, I am an Igorot. Let me be treated as I deserve. With respect, if I am good. With contempt, if I am no good. Irrespective of the name I carry, let the term Igorot remain and the world will use it with the correct meaning attached to it. This is your Igorot Guy Freddy. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching until the end. Please share this video to spread awareness. Follow our page and YouTube channel. Salasalamat, Yaman. See you on the next video. Cheers.